Hey ladies, welcome back to my channel. So today we have a beautiful look. It's a silver and pink look. Great for a wedding coming up, a cocktail party, an event. I love this combination. So this is Rewrite the Rules. This is a new matte eyeshadow palette coming out this spring. I'm very excited. I'm on my last lab samples, so you know we're very, very close. And I'm doing something on a wellness level in this video that I didn't think would work. And I really wanted to share it with you because I think it can help some of you. Are you ready? Let's get this beauty started. All right, ladies, I'm going to be doing a beautiful makeup tutorial, going into being more of an evening look. I'm working with my Rewrite the Rules. It is a cool matte palette that's coming out in the spring. This is my final round of samples that came from the lab. So I still just, I took them out so you could see the actual color. <laughs> They're my little baby squares, but I'm going to be showing those to you. I'm actually very excited. And I'm going to be doing, before we start the makeup tutorial, I'm gonna be doing something that I did not think that this would work. Now, if you've been following Following my videos for the last couple months, I did a wellness update and one of my last videos I had talked about how I went to the ophthalmologist and I thought my eyesight was changing. I was a little concerned. I've always worn glasses for far away, but I just felt like something was like a little bit different. So I was worried. And so I went and he said, I'm just putting on a little rose lip balm right now while I talk to you to hydrate my lips. So he said, I have extreme dry eye. Now, surprising, but yet not surprising, right? Because I'm always on my phone, I'm on multiple different screens all the time. I do have limits on my phone where it will basically make my phone dark on all my apps. And then I'm like, okay, I've had enough. Like, then I'll just wait for tomorrow. I've had this for years that I've done that. But uh, uh, clearly maybe, you know, being on the screen still is an issue. He gave me a sample of the Invisia eye drops and I went out and bought some of them at the, the drugstore. So I've been doing this a couple times a day, three to four times a day. I like it and I think it helps, but I wanted to do something a little bit more on a holistic level. So I started doing some research and I found this on Amazon. It's called Pavani Ayurvedic. I love the whole philosophy of Ayurvedic medicine. I studied it since I became an esthetician and I love it. So when I saw this, I was like, yes, I would love to try this. I don't know if it's going to work. I'm going to tell you what else it comes with. It came in this, this little thing here. It's a little glass cup that is shaped like your eye. So I'm going to do this with you. So you know how to, this would work, <laughs> but maybe if you have dry eye or basically Ayurvedic medicine is talking about how I have too much heat in my eyes and it would make sense sense because I fall into the category with they have three doshas and I fall into the category of pita and or pitta and I have the inflammation I have a lot of heat I mean if you look at basically what you I'm this I'm not an expert so you can go and research Ayurvedic medicine and how it's all broken down into but I do fall into having more heat in my body so I've been trying to figure out you know, what I'm eating and things so I don't create more heat. So this is to help with the eye and just the heat. And basically the eye wash ritual, it is to cleanse and renew the eye, soothe irritation, brighten and detoxify, reduce dark circles. So if you have dry eye like I do, this could be something that you want to implement in every week or whatever routine you want to do. I do it on Sundays, but I wanted to do it with you today. So this is rose and lavender in here. It comes in a little dropper but I don't, I just pour it in and I pour mm, like a half. I don't need the full cup. I don't want to waste it. I want to just do a half a cup. So I'm going to show you how this works and how refreshing it feels. So I have the cup halfway filled and then I have my clean skin club. I think that's what it's called. I get these on Amazon too. They're biodegradable. They're individual face towels that this is what I use on my face because I know there's no bacteria, etc., on them. And then it gives you this little card it came with. So basically it says, so you're going to press the cup to the eye and tilt back, allowing the solution to cover the eye. Blink eye open and close while moving eyeball around to allow solution to wash all areas of the eye. Proceed for 15 to 30 seconds and then release cup from the eye and discard solution. And then you repeat it on the, on the other eye. So I wasn't sure <laughs> when I was doing this, I was like, what am I gonna, what am I doing? But it feels so good, so refreshing. My eyes just feel incredible afterwards. So I basically have nothing on my eye, no makeup, what have you, right? So you're gonna be looking <laughs> up my nose, I'm sorry, but so you put it on your eye like this, you cup it and then you pull it back and then you move your eye around for 15 to 30 seconds. And the best part is when your eye is rotating all around because it just feels so good. So then I take the cup off 
and now I'll just pat just around my eye. I don't pat on my eye because I want to keep all of that beautiful hydration around my eye. So I'll just do it like this. And then now I'm going to throw this out and do the other eye. So now my other eye is complete and then I will just wait so everything can just really flush out just feels incredible. So if you're having, you know, issues with your eyes, like I am, this is something to consider research for yourself, ask your doctor, you know, or just make your best judgment on what your issues are. I think it feels incredible. And I love the fact that this is glass, not plastic. So this is just my little eye ritual that I've implemented into my wellness routine. Now my face is a little bit more red and irritated because I did do a little steam last night and some extractions and then I did do a little dermaplaning just on this part of my face so I do feel like that it is a little bit you know more sensitive I'm going to just put on this La Mer the hydrating infused emulsion I'm almost out of it this was part of my February experience so I am going to just it's like nice and milky it just feels really really good so I'm just going to hydrate the skin So now this is going to go into my skin, hydrating, feeling light and beautiful. I'm going to use, I bought this a couple months ago, the Inkey List. This is the caffeine eye cream. I'm gonna put just a little bit on here, my finger, squeeze it out. I'm gonna put it underneath my eye area here just to hopefully help with tightening and any of the that kind of puffiness. But I don't feel that, this is actually like a light serum, but it just seems like it takes a little bit for it to go into the skin. So we'll see. That's why I wanna put everything on now let it soak in so by the time we get to the eyes it should be completely prepped and ready to go so my first step is going to be using my eye primer i can't do makeup without this i've been using it now for i would think it's 16 years so i have this discoloration on my lids as i age whether you don't even have to be aging you can just have discolored eyelids so i've had this for i don't know since my 20s basically and i think as i'm getting older it's getting a little bit darker you might see blues and grays and just this discoloration right so i don't want to put on especially a cool gray palette with already discolored lids because it's going to be all muddied up. I want it to be nice and primed and prepped ready for my eyeshadow. It's going to last longer. It's going to read true. And I, it's funny, every, anytime anyone would sit into my, my makeup chair when I was on set, it was like, I could not do, I think my OCD went like an overdrive. Like if I forgot, if it was not my kit, my eye primer, I literally would, I would be like, oh my gosh, how do I get it? I just I did not like what makeup looked like without it. Make sure your eyes though are dry before you do this. I'm finding that I'm taking a little bit of that moisture and it's going into my eye primer and I don't want that. All right, eye primer is on. I have a feeling that I'm getting a blemish in the middle of my, like a unicorn. I can just imagine what that's, I can feel it and I know what it's gonna be like. So hopefully you won't have to experience that on the next video. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take the middle color. This is what it looks like. I know it's so small. I know it's probably hard to see, but this is the middle color that we're going to use all over the eyes. I'm going to do more of a beautiful evening look, maybe of a wedding to go to, maybe you're going to a cocktail party, what have you. This is really a nice, beautiful kind of look. So I'm going to just take my eyeshadow brush. I'm gonna go in the middle of the eye, up to the corner here, the inner corner, and then I'm gonna pull it across to the end. Now, with my shadows, these are matte, creamy shadows. They're very pigmented. You can go as light as you want. You can go into a medium or you can go into a full bodied, beautiful smoky eye. I wanted you to have range. I'm not going to make an eyeshadow palette that is super, super light and that you can't go into. When we get to this darkest color, I don't want you to be afraid of it because you have the power to manipulate the shadow the way you want to. You want it lighter, you're going to do a lot more diffusing. If you want it to be more intense, you're going to build it up. So there's a lot of range and that's what you need to be able to have. So we're going to just work this into the eye and then do the left eye. What's really nice about this is that you could stop with just the one color and then you could do mascara, you could do a little bit of blending if you wanted to, depending on what the look is that you want. But we're going to just take the bone color right now and we're going to just use the same brush. I'm gonna just flip it over on the other side. I'm gonna do just the brow bone area here and wash it down into this little inner corner and come out what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my short smudge brush. I like to call this like my little eraser brush, but 
I'm going to take the darkest, this is your contour color. I'm going to take this and make it more of my eyeliner first. I'm going to just do a really nice smudging at the base of the lash right here. So you can see that it is pretty intense, which is beautiful, but you can also take it and you can blend it out. So it's just a really nice kind of shadowing. So I'm going to just take this right at the base. You're going to see when you put on this matte shadow, you're going to see how beautiful the eye primer and the shadow work together because it almost grips the eyeshadow it keeps it on the eye. You can feel it. It's a beautiful feeling when this goes on and it's just really setting the eyeshadow on your eyelid. So don't fear if you're like, whoa, that's a lot. What happened? Okay, that's why I have my all my pads that are my eye makeup remover pads right by me. There's nothing on my eye except for that little eye cream. And I'm going to just lift up. So you can literally correct in a second. You don't have to say, oh gosh, I gotta start over. What did I do? I just messed it up. No, you didn't mess anything up. You're just going to, I like to keep it up. Sometimes I take a little bit too much off and it looks like I need to add a little bit more, but we want to lift. So can you see how I lifted it up? That's what I want for you because you don't wanna follow your eye. Your eyes kind start kind of drooping down or gravity has taken its course and you keep following your eye down, what's gonna happen? You're outlining your eyelid coming down. I want you to stop a little bit shorter and you want to lift up. You want that eyeshadow going up. Just like when we get to our concealer, it's going to be coming up. We're lifting the face. Makeup's an illusion. You don't need plastic surgery to create these different illusions. I want you to feel very comfortable and confident. And you know what the key is, ladies? It is technique. It is products that you're using that are going to work with you, not against you. And it's practice. That's what you need to concentrate on. Your own beauty, your own face shape, not anybody else's, and perfecting what works for you. And we're just gonna do the same thing that we did on this side to the left eye. So you can say, whoa, what happened? Don't worry. I just want you ladies to stay in the game. I don't want you to say, ugh, I can't do it. It never looks like what she does. It's never right. This is why you practice. You come back to the channel, you try it again, you try different colors. Maybe these colors aren't right for you. So you pick your favorite palette and then you do your favorite palette, but you're following these different techniques. Now, what we can do is, I have two options here. I can take my tapered blending brush and I have all the names on the brushes for you. So you don't have to feel like you have to remember or you forget and you're like, well, I don't know what this is for. And then you have your blending brush. So this is a more of a, a denser brush and it's like a pencil. So it's gonna pick up more product. So when you're working with a dark color like this, this might be too much for you because you might pick up too much and then go and say, oh no, well, Oh, how do I do this? So don't worry. Your tools, your brushes really lay the groundwork for you. They do the work for you. So you've got to make sure you're using the right brush. So I could, this is a darker color. I have my blending brush. You can see that it's fluffier. It's bigger. It has more bristles. It's not so dense. I can tap into the darkest color. And if I want to make a little, just definition, right? We can add a little definition right here, just like that. Now, don't worry that it looks like this. You can wipe off your brush, wiping it off, nothing on my brush now. And let's just blend that in. So we can get a little bit of that beautiful, remember this is more evening, we're going more evening, so we can get a little bit more of that beautiful contour, but it's going to be not so dense. Now, if you feel like, oh gosh, I still think that's too much, Nicole. You could go back in with the bone color. This is your lightest color in the palette, the first color. Take the same brush, tap into it, and then go over the whole little kind of contour area there and make it so it's lighter. So we talk about that a lot in, on this channel where I say, if you put on a color and you're like, whoa, it's too dark, I don't know what to do, do I take it all off? No, take a lighter color and you can wash it down. It almost gives it like, that kind of like pantyhose, if you will, like a kind of a veil over it. So that's basically what we just did. And you could build up again. You can, you just don't start over. I want you to feel comfortable that you know, oh, you know what, this is a fluffier brush. This is going to pick up some of that dark color, but it's going to just disperse it right here where I want to go into that contour, wipe it off, make sure there's nothing on there and just blend it in. And you can see the difference between this is more diffused, this is gonna be darker. So if we can say, I don't like how that looks. All right, let's just take a little bit of that bone color 
and we're going to just wash over and it's going to make it just nice and really just more approachable. Maybe you're going to feel more comfortable like that. All right, so you could say right now, because you don't have anything else on your face, you only have your eyes done and we're working with a darker color. You could say, oh, it's too much, it's too much. You can't say that yet. You have to wait until you keep building with the foundation, with your blush, with your lips. It all comes together. So don't be too quick to say, this isn't working because you feel that it's unbalanced. Of course it is, because we have to start with the eyes first, clean up everything we want to, any fallout. That's why we do the eyes first. And then now we're going to start building. So let's do our lashes. We're going to curl our lashes. Lashes are curled. Now we're gonna take our waterproof charcoal liner. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna intensify this lash line that we just built. So we did a little bit of that eyeshadow right at the base and it's nice and diffused. We're just gonna go over for staying power with our waterproof charcoal eyeliner. This isn't more of an evening look. I will take it underneath the eye, but just to about three quarters. You know what I wanna do? I wanna just take with my short smudge brush, I want to do the same thing underneath here just to give that smokiness to the under eye area here, this lash line. I'm gonna just take my Almay pad and make sure it's not coming down too far. Now I'm going to take my Volume Up mascara. This is going to really separate the lashes and really give me a beautiful look and it's gonna complete the eye look. Mascara is on. We're going to perfect the skin now. So my first thing that I want to do is I want to work on my pigmentation. I'm going to take my Just Peachy and I'm going to concentrate on the areas that are pigmented here so my concealer doesn't have to work that hard. This is what I'm dealing with. I'm working on it on multiple different levels, but I need to just neutralize out. So this little spot here is something new, it likes to appear and then it goes away. Not quite sure what's going on, but the good news is, is that I have a product that I formulated that will take this away and really brighten my under eyes. So I just take my foundation buffing brush and then I just buff it into my skin here. I have to do this because I'm dealing with this pigmentation. And as I age, I can probably guarantee you that it's going to be getting more or darker or less and then more because unless I do laser and I do like a fractal laser and I have a five day downtime or what have you, I'm just not willing to do that right now. Maybe in the future I'll be open to it. I just know that there's a lot of repercussions or not even repercussions, but like a lot of, you know, risk when you do do that to the skin. And I'm just not really available for that right now. Not to say I wouldn't be. I just saw a friend that has beautiful skin. She's in her mid fifties. And I said, what are you doing? She said, oh, I had Fraxel. I said, oh my gosh, it looks amazing. So it is an opportunity to do something, but I'm just not quite sure. Uh, I just have to research more. So for the redness, I'm going to just take my no redness and go around these areas here. I like to do like a little mosaic because I'm spot treating the issues. So Just Peachy is a peach color corrector that's going to help with those grays, blues, darkness. We do have an extreme cancel if you have darker skin and you have more of those deeper purples and you really need to lift darkness that is the way to go. We actually just had somebody on our private Facebook group, Beauty Reinvented. She showed her before and her after of using Extreme Cancel. It was night and day, it looked gorgeous. And I actually wanna reach out to her and ask her if we can use the photo so you can actually see. But when we start our Fierce Aging series that's coming up in April, May, and June, we're still finally finishing the uh, set. I'll tell you about the paint issue in another video. Last time I was telling you I was going to the paint store and um, I'll tell you about that whole fiasco, but you're going to see Extreme Cancel in action. You're gonna see the color correctors and you're gonna really know how to use them because you're gonna see other women's skin that are in their 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and beyond. So that's really exciting. So you can see how it's coming together now. The eyes are popping, you're, you're neutralizing out the skin. So I did the Just Peachy, the No Redness, now, I wanna do a little concealer. I'm using my creamy concealer in number two, which is light, and I will just take it right, so I don't feel like I need as much concealer. Like, I kind of am now doing maybe three points like that, but when we were talking about lifting the eye, if you bring your concealer up like that, you're lifting that eye. 
right? So this is something that you want to do when it comes to this end here. You want to crisp that up. So your eyeshadow is really like nice and crisp at that end. And then you can put on your concealer wherever you feel that you really need it. You know what I'm going to do? This little uh, blemish that's coming up, we're going to just do a little no redness on it. Going to just take my foundation buffing brush, bring it up on that side. So you can see how you want to obviously blend it, but you can see how it's really going to lift this eye blend. Of course, you don't want to have a big stripe there, but this is going to be a really beautiful creamy concealer for you that works with your skin. It's basically kind of like an airbrush. It just blurs out the skin. So instead of using my BB cream today, I wanted to try out on camera. I've been using it a couple different times. I bought this a couple weeks ago. This is the Estee Lauder Renutriv Ultra Radiance Liquid Makeup. It has SPF 20 in it. I don't pay attention to that because I would use a sunscreen prior. And this, this is 3N1 Ivory Beige. I felt like it was a pretty good color for just picking online. You'll see it looks a little bit more of a neutral really not more of like a kind of a pinky neutral that i would go for but this is actually a very beautiful foundation i liked it if you're looking for something a tad heavier than a bb cream you're going out for evening you want it to look really beautiful i do like the fact that it does give you this pretty kind of finish to it. So I've been using this if i'm doing more of a evening look or i'm doing a photo shoot depending on so you can see lots of coverage, but not heavy, heavy, not masking my face. I was actually very impressed with it. It is pricier for a foundation, but it was on sale when I just looked at Nordstrom where I bought it. So I wasn't sure if I could actually ask them if they could price adjust since I had just bought it. But anyway, we're going to do a really pretty pinky lip with this. I love grays and pinks together. It's actually a really beautiful combination. So I still have my rose lip balm on, so that is great. We're going to line my lips with silk. So I'm taking my waterproof lip liner in silk, and I'm going to just line my lips like I normally do. The combo is going to be pretty smart which is like a really nice pink. Now this would be really my go-to, but I want to put on a little bit of the, actually I can. So you have the two, so you can see that this is a little bit brighter. Actually I can, a little bit brighter. Then you have the pretty smart. That's really just like a really soft pink, but mixed together are absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to put on the pretty smart first, and then I'll put on actually I can, and I'm going to show you where I strategically put it. So this is pretty smart. So this would be a great time if you wanted to do a little lip gloss over, you could do Shams. This is really pretty. It would really give it just a little bit more of that glossy look, a little bit that ballerina pink on your lips. Very, very, very pretty. Or you could go in with Manifest and Glow if you wanted something to just kind of give your lips that extra. These are what I kind of call my toppers. Now I'm going to take my Actually I Can and just put it here in the middle and up at the top. So I have a little bit more of a dimensional lip. Very, very subtle, but it gives, you know, just the illusion of having a little bit more of a poutier lip right there. Now I could just take a little Manifest and Glow and go over also to give just that extra. I think it's beautiful, especially for an evening. And you could do your lipstick and then just always just touch up with your gloss. That's another way to do it. I'm going to take my Nikita Banana and I'm going to set my under eyes. This is my brightening powder. Now I'm going to, for the cheeks, I'm going to stay in the same family with the St. Bart's. This is a creamy, beautiful blush stick that's going to leave you with that nice silky kind of feel. It's not going to be glossy and sticky and feeling like it's wet on your skin. I'm going to just add a little bit to my face here. And my last step, I'm going to use my creme brulee. It's my hybrid bronzer. I'm going to use my angled blush brush and I'm going to just give that definition but I like to swirl it up into the blush so it looks like it's one and it's not just like there's the blush and there's the bronzer it's this has a cream and the bronzer together so it's very forgiving on the skin especially mature skin I wanted it to be soft and is really beautiful especially because the spring summer is coming up you can give yourself this beautiful bronze look but not over the top also you can use this for your eyeshadow it's really pretty throw that in with a little figured out manifesting glow it looks like you just came off the beach and then oh 
Oh, you know what? I did find my milk chocolate. I didn't find it. I actually went to the studio and I actually took one because I couldn't find mine here. I do have a couple gray hairs in my eyebrows for some reason on this right one. It likes to, I have actually three. So instead of feeling like I have to tint my eyebrows and keep up with that, all I do is I just groom over with milk chocolate. We have clear, we have blonde, and we have cocoa. So depending on where you fall into, this is a great way to add color to the brows, cover those grays, and then just not worry about it. I always had women that were coming in to get their brows tinted in my treatment room and I thought you know what it was just so frustrating for them after a while because the tint only lasts so long so having this you feel like you have more control like you're on vacation oh my gosh I have white hair it's like I can cover them up I don't have to worry that the tint just left and I have these like white and crazy brows so that's basically the look I'm going to do one last little step where is my oh here's my quarterly it's my beauty elixir just going to give a little hydration just sets the tone that aromatherapy just kind of uplifts your mood and you have a really beautiful look that you can do that's different. Matte, going into the grays, pinks, grays, just looks really beautiful. It's still fresh, it's still soft. It's all about how you want your eyes to be. A light wash of color, medium, you wanna go bold. You can control that with your technique, with your application, and it's about practicing, ladies. So as a mature woman, you have the power to create your look, whether you want it to be just soft, bold, you know, what, whatever your personality is for that day, that evening, that event, it is always dictated also by what you're wearing. So I want you to feel like you can pick up a darker palette and use it. You can do different levels. It's just really up to you, but stay in the game, enjoy Enjoy this process, enjoy this aging process and putting on makeup and watching your face change for the better. Everyone is getting more beautiful because it starts with your attitude, it starts with how you carry yourself and it starts with how you really show up for yourself in the morning. So ladies, until my next video, I'll see you later.